The one person that I've used on everything besides myself is Bob Kulik, who um, has been a friend of mine for about six years. Actually, he tried out for Kiss. And uh, right now he's in Meatloaf. And um, he, before that, did a tour with Alice Cooper and um, was in Lou Reed's group. He's a, he's a great guitar player. And uh, I used him on everything. Paul Stanley's 1978 solo album is a powerhouse display of rock prowess and melodic brilliance, reflecting the heart and soul of the Kiss frontman. Known for his charismatic stage presence and soaring vocals, Stanley delivers an array of catchy anthems and heartfelt ballads. Standout tracks like Tonight, You Belong to Me and Hold Me, Touch Me showcase his exceptional songwriting and emotive performance. The album blends hard rock intensity with pop sensibility, making it a must-listen for both hardcore Kiss fans and rock aficionados alike. Stanley's solo debut is a testament to his enduring talent and electrifying energy, capturing the essence of 1970s rock. Here's Paul interviewed on US radio in the fall of 1978, promoting the release of the album. You've been performing as Kiss for so long. How did you first feel at the idea of performing on your own? Well, I guess first there's there's a, a certain amount of trepidation. You know, you're a little scared about it because um, working in a group situation is, is actually kind of like being married because you know your partner's moves after a while and you're very secure within the, the um, world that you build up between the two of you or the four of you. In the case of the band, it's four, you know, the four of us. So the idea of going out and playing with other people was, was pretty much a challenge. It was, uh, I don't know, I looked to it uh, as pretty exciting initially because I'd get a chance to see just what I was capable of. On this album, how easy is it to recognize the Paul Stanley we know and love? Well, I guess tremendously. You know, what I wanted to do was be much more diverse in what I was doing on the album at the same time not come across like um, I was selling out or uh, I was doing different types of music to show what I was capable of that that was the last thing I wanted to do with the record um, you know I, I didn't want people to to get the idea I was trying to show I've matured you know, because maturity is like a dangerous word, you know. <laughs> what I wanted to do more was just do things that I've always done, but never done on record, you know. So, um, sing more, do some more melodic singing, which doesn't even mean soft singing, you know, it just means uh, more emphasis on melody. And, um, I don't know, I think uh, I've done a lot you know, to, to broaden my uh, scope. And I think everybody that's ever been into us is going to enjoy it. But then on top of that, I think there's a, a whole new audience. Who were the other musicians on your album? Um, well, the one person that I've used on everything besides myself is Bob Kulik, who um, has been a friend of mine for about six years. Actually, he tried out for Kiss. And uh, right now he's in Meatloaf. And um, he, before that, did a tour with Alice Cooper and um, was in Lou Reed's group. He's a, he's a great guitar player. And uh, I used him on everything. I used, uh, on a couple of cuts, the bass player from Meatloaf, Steve Buslow. And um, on a couple of cuts, I used Richie Fontana, who used to be in Piper. I used him on drums. On some other cuts, I used a guy, Eric Nelson, on bass, who plays with Nick Gilder now. And um, I used uh, Craig Cramp, who's a drummer for Nick Gilder now. He used to be in Flo and Eddie. And uh, before that, he was in The Robs. I used him on some stuff. And uh, then on some other stuff... One track I, I had Carmine play on, and um, a friend of mine, Pepe Castro, 
sang with me on some of the stuff. Pepe was in the Blues Magoos, and he's doing some great stuff out here now in L.A. And um, a friend of his, Doug Gling Katsaros, great name, he uh, plays piano and sings on some stuff. How did it feel to sit down with a new bunch of musicians? Well, Bob and I have been working together for about five or six years. I've been fooling around playing with Bob since I've known him. And uh, um, he and I play very, very well together. So he knows exactly the way I think. So that was easy. Still, to walk, still to walk into a studio and see a whole different band than the guys I'm used to is is very uh, interesting, very strange at first. But um, more what I was looking for was people that were on the same wavelength as I was, so that without too much, you know, talking, I could get them to play what I wanted. Um, I didn't think I should sit down and tell anybody note for note what to play. I thought that I should be able to direct them, but that the um, the ideas had to be similar to begin with. You know, the musicians had to be thinking the same approach as I was. So uh, it was actually very refreshing to work with different people. Very, very, very interesting. And uh, I can only grow from things like that. Do you think the KISS sound will be changed after these individual efforts? Well, at this point, up till now, you know, some some of the guys have always been more involved in the production than others, just, you know, for whatever reasons. But I think at this point, everybody's grown tremendously with their albums. And the really nice thing about it is that when the albums are all done and each of us hears the other, it's it's really a great way of saying, hey, this is what I'm about. This is the way I've always heard things, you know. Um it's like uh, really getting to know somebody even better than you do. So at that point, we can only respect each other that much more, you know, because uh, I don't think any of the albums are going to be a letdown. I think all of them are going to be wonderful albums. Didn't you ever feel these albums could be a threat to KISS as a whole? Well, we, I think in a way we, we uh, kept ourselves from getting into trouble. We kept ourselves from getting into trouble by letting ourselves do the solo albums. A lot of groups run into frustrations because they need to get away from each other. They need to create a little on their own. And not given that space to do it, things get a little, you know, edgy, you know. And uh, we all just went off and, and did our thing. Granted, if one of us did it, like in any group... I think it's a different situation, though, with KISS, because in most groups, you don't have four strong personalities. So the guy that usually goes off and does the solo album in a, in a group context is uh, usually the main contributor anyway. So, sure, the other guys feel, hey, he's leaving us, you know, you know, he's getting, he's going to move out soon. Uh, whereas with KISS, we all contribute, and we all have a lot to say. So we all just went off and did our albums. You, it doesn't really apply to most bands because I don't know that uh, the Joe Schmo group uh, could go out and all guys do an album and they would sell. It, it doesn't quite apply. You know, Kiss is an exception. This is the first time I can remember a band doing solo albums without breaking up. Yeah, that's why it was uh, amazing for months and even still now at some, in some circles. You know, people are talking about, hey, you know, I know the band broke, you know, the band's breaking up or the band broke up. We, we've anything but broken up. It's um, like six years down the line now, you know, and there's not that many groups around that have been together six years, you know, and uh, sure, we go through, through changes and metamorphosis, and, you know, we we'll, Kiss Now is not what Kiss was in 73, but... Um, Kiss is a lot more knowledgeable. We've been through more, you know. I see Kiss becoming a uh, um, much more than a legend. Where I want to become a 
an institution. You know, I mean, we started this off broke in a, in a one room rehearsal loft with egg crates on the wall. And we've taken it this far. And uh, I want to see it become exactly that. I want to see an institution.